The Kraft Food Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's see what's going on in Summerfield. Long since, the lights of our little city have been blinking out like retiring fireflies. But a light and good fellowship grow brighter and brighter above Floyd Munson's barber shop at the Jolly Boys Club. tugboat in the shower. Now, Commissioner. <laughs> Everybody sounds better in the shower, huh, Pete? Yeah, when you say that, huh? <laughs> I take tub baths. Start another one, Floyd. One with a baritone lead this time, if you don't mind. Okay. But it's getting late, isn't it, Commissioner? No, let's sing another. There is a tavern in the town, in the town. No, no, Peavy, not that one. Well, here's a pip, best song ever written. Dear old girl. Oh, great. The robin sings about you. Come on, Chief. Dear old girl, it speaks of how I love you. <clears throat> the blinding tears of falling. As I think of my lost pearl and my broken heart is falling, falling for you, dear old girl. Oh, boy. Yeah, great. You see, nothing like a good song. What's next? Fellas, I was just looking at my watch. It's after 12 o'clock. It is. That's all. But, Floyd, it's early. Yeah? Well, I gotta have a steady hand with my razor tomorrow. Let's go, Chief. Oh, for Peavy, you want to sing some more, don't you? Well, there's Mrs. Peavy to think about. I wouldn't think of staying away from home after midnight. Why not? Did I say that Mrs. Peavy to think about? <laughs> a fine bunch of jolly boys, afraid to stay out after 12 o'clock. Who's afraid? I ain't afraid of nothing. Then why don't you stay in sync? I don't know why it is, but whenever we start having a little fun, everybody has to start checking in to their wives. Now, Commissioner, is that nice? Well, it's true, isn't it? I wouldn't call it checking in exactly. Speaking for myself, I've had a good time this evening. We've sung some good songs, and we've sung them rather well, and... Now I'm ready to go home to Hazel. All right, go to Hazel. You go ahead. <laughs> Just when things are getting good. I wish the judge wasn't working tonight. He wouldn't go running home at the mere shank of the evening. I can understand how you feel, Commissioner. No home to go to like P.V., Floyd, and me. I have a home, Chief. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for me. Yes, but not a loving wife. And that's what makes the home wife. Like the poem goes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, so crammed full of cozy joy and crowned with a woman's love. What's that from? The shooting of Dan McGrew. <laughs> nice. Ever think of settling down, Commissioner Gildersleeve, to the real comforts of life? 
Getting married? Now, Chief, I don't need a wife. I don't know, Commish. When the chips are down, you can't beat women. Man's best friend. Nothing like him, huh, Pete? No, no, I wish. I guess you're right, Floyd. <laughs> I guess we're pretty lucky, huh, fellas? And, Commissioner, any time you'd care to have me introduce you to one of Hazel's sisters... All that... right, Chief. Good night, ye gods. <laughs> feel like going home at all. Meow. Oh, hello, Kitty. What are you doing up this late? Must be a bachelor, too. Meow. Go away. <laughs> Wish you'd stop walking in front of me. Wonder if there's anything in what those old fogies said back there. Nah, what the heck. What do I want with a wife? If there's something missing in my life... And that something is... Well, a light on in Adeline's living room. Why would she be up at this hour? I wonder if... Nah, uh, a little late to ring a girl's doorbell. So I'll just sing loudly as I pass. <laughs> Let's see. When I'm calling you... Answer to hmm. Maybe she didn't hear me. Got rid of the cat anyway. <laughs> Try again. When I'm calling you. Is that you, Mr. Oh, hello, Adeline. Were you calling someone? Well, I was singing Indian Love Call. <laughs> Southern Indian. <laughs> I saw the light in your little parlor, Adeline. Well, I've had the most frightful struggle this evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Struggle? Who with? With my income tax. Oh. I I'd like to ask you in to help me with it if it wasn't so late. It is a little late, but... Uh... Gracious, I don't know what my little old grandmother in Savannah would say if she knew Adeline unlatched her door for a man at midnight. <laughs> well... I won't tell my grandmother if you won't tell yours. <laughs> all right. Uh, come in, then. Well, all right. I was just having some coffee. Won't you come into the living room and join me? Coffee? Well, that would taste good. You get comfortable now while I pour. Thank you. I'll just stand by the fireplace for a minute. Cream? Uh, just a little. A little more. Two lumps? Do you have three? There. I hope my coffee's good. Uh, uh, you know, there's something about a woman pouring coffee. Wouldn't you like to sit down here on the couch, close to the coffee? Well, <laughs> that would be kind of nice. Uh, uh, cookies, too. I made them myself. Oh. Uh. <laughs> See you now. I bet you're hungry after working so hard tonight. Oh, no. I was just down at the club with the Jolly Boys. They all had to go home to their wives. Oh? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, it seems strange to me that a nice man like you hasn't married. Well, we Jolly Boys were just talking about that this evening. Marriage. Oh, what a marvelous topic for conversation. I imagine you have some very intelligent views on marriage, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I didn't really start thinking about it until they brought up the subject. Isn't that funny? I didn't either, until you brought up the subject. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, are your views, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, well, um, I think marriage should be looked at very impersonally, don't you? Well, that's one way. You have to be practical, goodness knows. You bet. I think marriage should be faced like the problem it is. Now, suppose that I'm a man and you're a woman. All right, let's suppose. Isn't this fun? Now, now suppose they would like to get married. Why? What are the pros and what are the cons? Well... The man would have someone waiting for him when he came home. 
And the woman could turn her property over to the man and wouldn't have to bother with old income tax every year. Well, yes, that would be an advantage to her. <laughs> now we have to think of an advantage for the man. Well, that would probably depend upon the woman. Did you have anybody in mind, Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? Uh, well, uh... <clears throat> getting a little late. <clears throat> be nice to talk about these things again sometime. Nice to discuss things impersonally, like you do. Thank you, kind sir. Oh, oh here's a cookie crumb on your mustache. <laughs> Let me brush it off. <laughs> Impersonally, yeah. That's the only way to... to Adeline. Yes? Yeah, Mr. Gildersleeve? Adeline. Could I... Hmm. Good night. Oh. <laughs> what about my income tax? Income tax? Oh, that. Uh, tomorrow. All right. And why don't we start a little early? Good idea. Uh, uh, good night, Adeline. Good night, Throckmorton. <laughs> she called me Throckmorton. Hi, George. Adeline is wonderful. Don't want to rush into things, but I'll bet if I played my cards no. right. Why don't you go home? <laughs> Receive a loving greeting. Hi, Uncle. Uh, Leroy. Good morning. Pancakes for uh, breakfast. Yeah. Cut them up into little pieces, Leroy. You're not a seal. Don't want to be late to school. I'm glad I caught you before you dashed off. I did a little patrol duty this morning, young man, and you've been reading comic books under your sheets after hours again. What? Don't you deny it. I found eight dead flashlight batteries under your bed. Now clear them out. But, Uncle, if you keep them in a dark place, they get a little light back in them. Don't argue. Clear them out. That's an order. And another thing, young man. Good morning, man. Uncle Mark, Leroy. Uh, good morning, Marjorie. Look, Uncle, the darling new spring dress is at Hogan Brothers. Narrow shoulders, new... Marjorie, look. please, I'm talking to Leroy. And must you bring the newspaper to the breakfast table? Yes, why not? My dear, breakfast is not the place for reading. Well, what else is there to do? Nothing but man talk. A woman can't get a word in edgewise. Hey, Marge, let me see the comic. I'm looking at the paper. I just want the comic. I'm pulling you, little weasel. Children. Look what you did to the fashion section. Look what you did to Fearless Fosdick. I don't know what this house is coming to. I come down to breakfast feeling wonderful, and you two start acting like little savages. Goodness knows I've tried to raise you children properly. But I guess I failed. Now, Anki, I'm sorry. Yes, I have. I failed. I've tried to be like a father and a mother to you, but I couldn't be both. So, perhaps there's only one thing left to do. What's that? Get you a mother. What? Well, as you say, Marjorie, there's nothing but man talk around here. Perhaps you need a woman in this house to talk to and to plan with, to understand you. What are you getting at, Uncle Mort? Yeah, what's up? Nothing. But perhaps I should get married. Well, for corn's sake... Uncle Moore. Now, now, I'm not thinking of myself, you understand. I'd be doing it just for you children. <laughs> Careful, young man. Auntie, you're afraid to get married. Afraid? Well, you backed out of marriage with Leela Ransom and Eve Goodwin, and you were, you were nearly sued by that Spanish dancer. Now, Marjorie... You're just being impulsive, and you know it. I am not. I might even talk to the lady about it today. Oh, who is it this time? Well, <laughs> Excuse I... me, Uncle Mort, you're wonderful. Mm, I hope you never change. But, Marjorie, I, I am going to change. Of course you are. Mm. Well, so long, Uncle. Leroy, haven't you forgotten something? Oh, congratulations. Not that. Excuse yourself. Okay, excuse me. Do I call you Daddy now? Leroy... <laughs> Oh, that boy. Why is it whenever I think of getting married, nobody takes me seriously? Mr. Gillespie, what's this about you getting married? Huh? Well, 
Sometimes I think I should, Bertie. Uh oh. Guess Bertie better be looking for another job. What? Ain't no place for Bertie around here if you have a wife to do the work. Well, now, wait a minute, Bertie. In the first place, the young lady I had in mind isn't a very good cook. Oh? Yeah. Anyway, we could never get along without you, Bertie. We hope you stay with us for life. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Gilsey. I just didn't think I'd be staying if there was nothing to do. But there's another person in the house that'd be even more to do. That's right, Mr. Gilsey. And after a year or so, maybe even more to do. Yeah. What? And after two years or so, twice as much to do. Oh, never thought of that. And after three years, maybe three times as much to do. No, Bertie. And after four years... Bertie, stop! You're right, Mr. Gilsey. I'm set for life. <laughs> Oh, well. What's wrong with that? More from the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. Say, that birdie. The other day, I asked her why she always served parquet margarine, and she said... I buy parquet because I know a good thing when I taste it. And that's just the way millions feel about parquet, Bertie. That's why parquet is a favorite spread for America's bread. It's a truly delicious topping for rolls, pancakes, waffles, and muffins, as well as bread. I say it is, and I know a good thing when I taste it. Parquet is packed with wholesome nourishment, too. It's made from only choice products of American farms, and each fresh-flavored pound is enriched with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. The young folks need them vitamin things. We all do. Another thing, parquet is made by Kraft, and that name means quality everywhere. Still, parquet, the quality margarine, actually costs less today than it did a year ago. Well, I buy parquet because it tastes so good, and I know good thing when I... I know you do, Bertie. Everyone likes nourishing economical parquet because of its fine, fresh flavor. Try it, friends. You'll like it. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. And now back to the great Gildersleeve as he walks downtown with gay and giddy thoughts running through his brain. I am calling you. Uh, certainly glad I stopped by Adeline's last night. Don't know why I kept things on such an impersonal basis. But, as always tonight. <laughs> nice roses in the flower shop today. Say. That gives me an idea. Well, hello, Floyd. Hi, Commish. Hey, where are you taking the roses? Looks like you're up to something. Well, maybe I am and maybe I'm not. Maybe you old married men set me to thinking last night. A man shouldn't wait forever to take that fatal step. Fatal is right. Huh? What's this, Floyd? Hey, you didn't want anything, did you, Commissioner? It's nearly 12, and i got to get home to lunch. Certainly. I want to shave. What's your hurry? You've been late before. Oh, little Floyd, you better not be late today. He... Say, why don't you come home to lunch with me? Lunch? With you? Why? Yeah. Hey, you aren't having a little trouble at home, are you, Floyd? Oh, no. Come on, I'll shave you when we get back. Not today, Floyd. Okay. Never been to my house, but if my wife's cooking ain't good enough for you, we'll just... Well... If you put it that way... Sure, and let's drive your car. I didn't bring mine down. Huh? See, we broke up so late at the club, I told Lovey I got a flat. This morning I had to go out and drive a nail into my new tire to prove it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't think I'd better go home with you, Floyd. Nonsense. Lovey will welcome us with open arms. But come on. Got to ring the doorbell, Commissioner. Left in such a hurry this morning, I forgot my keys. Huh? Something about this I don't like, Floyd. Huh? You sure Lovey isn't still mad at you about last night? No, Lovey has the mind of an elephant. She can forget. Yeah. Uh, Floyd, I better be going. Don't leave me now, Commissioner. I know, but uh, uh, hello, Mrs. Munson. Hello. Hi, Lovey. 
I got a little surprise for you. Well, it better be a good one, Mr. Munson. <laughs> She's a great kid, a commissioner. <laughs> I brought the water commissioner for lunch, lovey-dovey. Playing politics. <laughs> <clears throat> you, uh... You remember Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll say. Well, flowers for me? Well, I had another party in mind. Oh, I thought so. Anybody around here bring me flowers? I'd drop dead. Wouldn't I, Mr. Munson? <laughs> oh, come on, lovey, and sweeten up. How's about fixing up some lunch, huh? Seems to me a man that can stay out till one o'clock in the morning can fix his own lunch. Well, come on, Kamish, say a good word. Huh? Oh, <clears throat> you mentioned Floyd being out till one o'clock, Mrs. Munson. Well, one o'clock isn't bad. I didn't get home till two. Two? You see what kind of people you're running around with, Floyd? I, I was only helping a lady with her income tax. <laughs> Come on, Commish. Sorry this had to happen, but we'll rustle up our own lunch. And Mrs. Munson can go peddle her papers. Floyd Munson, you stay out of my kitchen. Now, Mrs. Yeah, Munson. Yeah, pipe down, will you? Now, Floyd. Don't you yell at me, Floyd. Now, Mrs. Munson. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're a guest here. Yes, but Mrs. Yeah, Munson. Yeah, you keep out of this, Commissioner. What? Floyd, you have to. Hey, now you got a crime. But I. Give me my Floyd, you want to go out of the Yeah, what? you are yeah, What? Who, me? Yeah, you. Mr. Gildersleeve, don't you ever talk at our door again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is closer, the back or the front door? <laughs> Welcome to your friendly neighborhood drugstore. Yeah, well, thanks. I'm glad somebody's friendly. Too bad there aren't more happy couples like you and Mrs. Peavy. Oh? <laughs> Hi, George. If I ever get married, peace and harmony are going to be the watchwords in my home. You're not seriously contemplating matrimony, Mr. Gildersleeve. But I see you're carrying some flowers. Well, it's always something to think about. It's a good thing to think about. For quite a while. <laughs> nice bouquet. Uh, thank you. Flowers make quite an impression on women. Mrs. Peavy's fond of flowers. Oh. Nasturtiums, hydrangeas, tiger lilies. Oh, well, there's nothing like roses, though. Of course, these looked a little better before I went to Floyd's house. Got them caught in the door on the way out. <laughs> that so? Yeah. Seems his wife thought he stayed out a little late last night. Well, it was a little late, but I thought we had rather a gay, rip snorting time. Yeah, that's exactly what got Floyd into trouble. But I fixed everything. That's so? Yeah. Everything's all right at the Munson house now. Well, at least they're not mad at each other anymore. I went over there to lunch and squared things. Mr. Gunderson, you wouldn't care to come home to dinner with me. Yeah. You... <laughs> No thanks, Peavy. Take her some nasturtiums or tiger lilies. What's wrong with all these married people? Roses look a little wilted tonight. Still be all right if I hadn't spent the whole day trying to get those married men out of the doghouse. Oh, well... Little Adeline will appreciate him. I wonder if she's been thinking about me today, too. <laughs> that you, Gilda? Oh, hello, Judge. I presume you're paying a call on Miss Fairchild. Well, as it so happens... I see the light in her window, and you're drawn to it like a big fat moth to a flame. <laughs> <laughs> now, see here, Hooker. I'll thank you to keep your legal beagle out of my personal affairs. What have you in the big box? Roses? It's my laundry. And stop sniffling. And stop peeking. And red roses. You know what they mean to a lady, don't you, Gilda? I love you. Now, Judge. Could it be that you're getting serious about this southern bell? Don't go jumping at conclusions, Judge. Well, if you're ever going to settle down, it's high time you did it. Miss Fairchild is an exceedingly gracious lady. Of course, you haven't known her very long. Well... 
February was a short month. But... However, sometimes whirlwind romances turn out for the best, Gilly. Oh? Uh? You're the type who would enjoy marriage, sitting by the hearthside evenings, going over the household expenses with your spouse. Expenses? <laughs> squeezing pennies here and there, rearranging your budget to include some pretty bauble for your beloved. Not so fast, Judge. Remember, I've got to feed and clothe Marjorie and little Leroy. Yeah, but when a man marries, his wife must be his first consideration, Gildy. You must forsake all others and cling only to her. <laughs> but I'm keeping you from your rendezvous with destiny. Good luck, old friend. Uh, wait a minute, Judge. Um, what are you doing tonight? Well, I had a game of pinochle set with Chief Gates, but... Since the Jolly Boys get together last night, his wife won't let him out. Not Chief Gates, too. Consequently, I'm as free as a bird. You better go on in, Gildy. Present your poses. It's leap year. She might pop the question. Uh, hmm. wonder if they'd stay fresh if I buried him here in the snow behind this tree. <laughs> Just a minute, Horace. Now, Gildy, don't do anything you regret. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. Let's go play Pinochle. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve will be back very shortly. Have you been missing out on a good thing, friends? Have you missed trying parquet, the margarine of craft quality? Every day, millions of women choose delicious parquet as their favorite spread for bread, rolls, pancakes, and waffles. Its rich, fresh parquet goodness makes it the perfect topping for table use. Parquet is made from only the choice farm products, and each nourishing pound is fortified with 15,000 units of vitamin A. Don't miss trying tasty parquet margarine today. More than ever, it's the better buy for both bread and budget. Just think, delicious, nourishing parquet margarine actually costs less today than it did a year ago. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. I shouldn't have let you in after the way you treated me tonight, Throckmorton, but if you really were up until midnight with a sick friend, I suppose it's all right. Well, good. But I think you owe it to me to tell me who the sick friend was you were sitting up with. Well, Judge Hooker was my friend, and I got sick of him and came over here. (laughs) Oh, you man, I declare. I'll forgive you this time. Now you wait while I run and get some coffee. Get comfortable now, you hear? You bet. (laughs) <laughs> Gildersleeve, you shouldn't do this. You might learn to like it. <laughs> Good night, folks. wonder if I should go get those roses out of that snowbank. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Leakey. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Edward Everett Horton will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. Oh, Eddie. Huh? Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Most everybody likes macaroni and cheese, and modern homemakers like to make this grand main dish the quick, easy, economical way with Kraft Dinner. In just seven minutes cooking time, the special macaroni is fluffy, light, and tender. Then you stir in the Kraft grated for that good cheddar cheese flavor. You get both of these magic ingredients in every package of Kraft dinner, enough to make four generous servings of macaroni and cheese at a cost of only a few pennies more than a package of just macaroni alone. So why not put Kraft dinner on your shopping list right now? This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.